Hello there my friends, my name is Riskfish and today I'm bringing you a video on RE0. RE0 is one of the most popular and in-depth stories of the past decade, however despite this, it still has many overlooked elements in its story, and today I will be exploring one of them. Tapai, the author, has confirmed that RE0 has three big mysteries, and Aldebaran, Knight of the Priscilla Camp, is heavily involved in one of them. Aldebaran is already a suspicious character in the show, being summoned from another world, just like Subaru. However, today I will argue that Al is also the current warlock of melancholy. Point 1. Aldebaran shares his name with a star. A bit of perspective first. In Arc 5, Subaru discovers that all the authority users, including witches, warlocks, archbishops, and arguably sages as well, share their names with stars from the real world. Furthermore, quite a few of the descriptions of the stars in the real world are relevant to the characters of RE0. For example, Shaul is a star located at the tail end of the Scorpius constellation and comes from the Arabic word meaning stinger or raised tail. In RE0, Shaul not only has the health snipe ability, which arguably functions like a stinger, but she can also transform into a colossal scorpion. Another example would be Sirius, which comes from the Greek word Syros meaning glowing or scorching and is the brightest star in the night sky. In RE0, Sirius has the ability to transfer her chains into fire and control them, while her empathy-based ability weakens with distance similar to a bright light. Her personality is also very bright and optimistic, just like the brightest star in the night sky. The same method also applies to Aldebaran, who shares his name with the brightest star in the Taurus constellation. The name Aldebaran derives from the Arabic meaning the follower, based on the star appearing to follow the Pleiad star cluster. This in itself is also interesting because the Pleiades when translated to Japanese means Subaru, literally saying that Owl appears to follow Subaru. Aldebaran is also a red giant star and is also accompanied by a smaller red dwarf called Aldebaran B. The two stars are believed to share a common motion rather than just being visual companions, which means that Aldebaran B could be the inspiration for Priscilla. Expanding on this, Priscilla isn't the name of a star, and she also has a divine blessing, which are incompatible with authorities, which makes it unlikely that she herself is a witch, and back up the idea that she is based on Aldebaran B. Both of these stars are also red, which could suggest why Priscilla and her camp tend to be associated with the colour red. The reason Al has a blue dragon sword could also be a reference to blue giant stars, which is a potential stage in the life cycle of red giant stars. Point 2. Aldebaran has an authority. The main evidence here is that in Arc 5 he demonstrates the ability to loop time over a short distance. This can be seen when he claims to have both tested and dodged Capella's blood, despite Capella not seeing him do either. Furthermore, she notes that she feels an inexplicable sense of bothersome violation. Attacks that should not have been seen through, pursuits that should not have been imagined, Al had been using his own ability to survive as long as possible, as if he'd known of all of these choices. He himself also makes reference to multiple tribes and speaks of a territory of some kind. We can also suggest a name for his ability if we go back to the stars. You see, Aldebaran is quite literally the bullseye in the Taurus constellation, which can be both used to describe a small area of high value and also an unexpectedly good result. Both of these descriptions can be applied to Al's ability and would also explain as to why he describes it as a bet. Why is this ability an authority though? Well, apart from it being relevant to a star, messing with time is barely possible even with the ultimate shadow magic. Even Beatrice can only make time stand still at best. Reversing time is a dream within a dream. This is a statement from Roswell explaining why Roswell has such a high value of Subaru's return by death. It also explains why Al's ability can't be magic based. Firstly, Al uses earth magic, not shadow magic. Secondly, he only uses basic spells like Donna and El Donna, even when in a life or death situation. This shows that Al's magic abilities are low and definitely can't affect time. The other important thing to note is, as mentioned earlier, blessings and authorities are incompatible and Al doesn't have a blessing, meaning there is no obstruction to him having an authority. Point 3. Aldebaran shows signs of melancholy. Aldebaran is an interesting character because on the surface he acts frivolous and goofy, but underneath there are definite signs of melancholy. This is best shown in Chapter 40 of Arc 5 where the authority of Raph makes Al's true feelings visible. Within this single conversation, Al shows numerous signs of long-term depression. For example, despite having an authority one of the most powerful assets there is, he shows a constant sense of worthlessness and powerlessness, believing that he can't make a difference and that he would only lose something if he tried. He also shows signs of futility, saying that even if the witch cult is defeated, they will just come back. He also shows a sense of hopelessness via low expectations, believing that the best he can aim for is to escape the city with himself and Priscilla, as any more than this would be beyond his means. This drastically changes the perception of Al, as he realises that his previous comments which could be viewed as dry humour are actually him voicing his depression. 
This might also be why the author designed him with a helmet, as facial expressions are also a form of communication, and the absence of these leave room for Al's emotions to be misunderstood. Al also seems to be in deep thought, which can often be a symptom of pensive depression or melancholy. This can be seen in most scenes where Al is quieter in the background and is content to observe. It can also be seen in his interactions with Priscilla, where he is very conscious of wording things in a way that won't hurt her, and jokingly goes along with her insults even at the expense of himself, because he knows it makes her feel good. If we go back to the star Aldebaran, there are also hints of melancholy there too. For example, Aldebaran was once the name given to the entire Hades star cluster, but now only refers to a single star. This could be a reflection of Al's own decline which is demonstrated very visually by his missing arm and his scarred face, which can be seen in the manga. This could also be classed as an example of physical melancholy. The final thing to note here is that Aldebaran is on the other side of Orion's belt from Sirius, possibly implying a reverse personality to Sirius. Point 4. Hector and Al share a theme. Hector, the last known warlock of melancholy, lived 400 years ago and vanished after his attack on the sanctuary. The important thing here is his name, Hector, which is based on the greatest warrior of Troy in the Trojan War. Al, on the other hand, spent 10 years fighting as a gladiator in Valachia, which means that they share a warrior theme. The helmet itself could also be a reference to Troy, as just like a Trojan horse, it is hiding a secret inside. Hector, like Al, also frequently expressed his negativity in words, which seems to be a trait of the authority of melancholy, and another similarity between the two. Point 5. Al knew sins other than Capella. In Arc 5, Al tells Capella that she is rather different from the other sins he has known, which suggests that Al knew that of her archbishops, and there are a few possibilities here. If Al is melancholy, then it is highly likely that he met the previous warlock in the Colosseum. Now, in Arc 3, Al says you could say I've been able to survive long with just a single arm, which might suggest that he defeated the previous warlock of melancholy, losing his arm in the fight, effectively trading it for the authority. Remember that the authority of melancholy seems to be associated with warriors. Al also knows about the authority of gluttony. A possible reason for this is that Al could have asked Gluttony to eat his bad memories to treat his depression. Remember that while Priscilla is important to Al, he lived in this world for 10 years before meeting her, essentially as a slave. According to Wiki, Al does suffer amnesia, so this is a possibility. He also seems to know Echidna, as he knew when she possessed Anastasia, calling her a witch. However, he wasn't actually hostile. There is also a lot of evidence to suggest that Al knows the Archbishop of Pride. For starters, he knew that Typhoon died and was buried in Pristella, and it is possible that Stride Valachia, the last known Archbishop of Pride, got his authority from Typhoon's remains. Note that Al was in Valaki in the same time frame, and as seen by Priscilla and Subaru, has natural chemistry with prideful individuals. It might even be possible that Stride was the one to free him from the arena, as despite being prideful, Stride praised things he found satisfactory. If we go back to the stars, we can also see that Aldebaran, the star of illumination, is directly across the zodiac from Antares, the star of anger, pride and revenge. Aldebaran is also said to be a portal to the mysteries of the mind, and when balanced with the fixed star Antares, a portal to the mysteries of the heart, which could further show a connection between Aldebaran and Pride. Lastly, Al might actually be referring to Subaru. Al has already been confirmed to be involved in one of the three big secrets of RE0, which could be that Subaru has the authority of Pride. The two actually share a bond, being the only two summoned characters in RE0, and as Al says, they are therefore able to understand each other's agony. You also see Al show concern for Subaru in Arc 5, trying to talk him out of his save everyone mindset because he knows it will only lead to Subaru getting hurt. At the same time, Subaru's optimistic personality is clearly affecting Al as he chooses to follow Subaru in the disaster. One smaller piece of evidence for the similarities between the two is that in Arc 3, Priscilla tells Subaru that his clown-like behaviour may be natural, but it's actually just a thin shell to hide his weakness. What is important here is that Priscilla is sincere, and this is one of the only times that she actually is, which might be because she has noticed the same characteristics in Al, someone who is close to her. Point 6. Al's secret, the only village, and his future battle with the Black Serpent. One thing that is shown in the manga is that Al has an extreme hatred towards Ram, but is fine with Rem. One of the only events we are aware of that differentiates them that much is the attack on the Oni village. Remember that Rem was passive throughout this fight whereas Ram was slaughtering the cultists. It is also important to notice that Tapai has mentioned in the Q&A that Ram with her horn is one of the five people that could sell the White Whale, so she was extremely powerful. 
Factoring that this happened 10 years before the story, and previously Al has been mentioned to be fighting in the arena for 10 years after losing his arm, everything fits chronologically. It is quite likely then that Ram not only killed the previous warlock of melancholy, which is why Al has the authority, but that she was the one to cut off Al's arm. And you could arguably say that the marks we see on Al's face are burn marks, and there was lots of fire during the attack on the Oni village. Since Al is a character in Arc 7, then if Ram appears as well, this storyline may be explored in that arc. In regards to Arc 7, the Priscilla camp is confirmed to be the main party, and there is evidence of a potential plotline. The last great demon beast, the Kurohibi, or Black Serpent, has yet to make an appearance, but he has connections to both Melancholy and Aldebaran. Firstly, Melancholia in Greek means black bile, and the only thing left over from the snake's attack on Elio Forest is its poison, which is known as black water, which could be classed as a type of black bile. Secondly, there is a Decatasoic story in which Aldebaran was a star which had fallen to the earth and whose killing of a serpent led to the formation of the Mississippi River. This brings us to the end of the video. I hope this last piece of information has been generally interesting and allows you to form your own theories. And I will see you next time.